my name's Lisa Reich and I edit Boots Health and Beauty magazine. I've been working in women's magazines for around 10 years now and in that time I've worked with countless models, celebrities and makeup artists. I think one of the most important things that I've learned in my career is about skincare um, and the fact is that if you look after your skin then it will look after you. Healthy, gorgeous looking skin is a priority for all of us and in this DVD you'll learn the expert tips and tricks you need to get the best skin possible and create the perfect canvas for your makeup. Cleansing is a really important part of your skincare regime. Water alone will only remove about 60% of grime, makeup, any surface dirt that you've accumulated throughout the day. So it's really important to find a good cleanser and one that's going to be tailored to your needs. There are lots of cleansers on the market at the moment. Um, to choose the right one for you, it's really simple, just look at the label. One size doesn't fit all. If you wear a lot of makeup, then you need to find a product that's tailored to your needs. One that's going to remove waterproof mascara, who's going to remove foundation thoroughly. Um, if you don't wear makeup, then you can afford to use a lighter cleanser. Again, if you have sensitive skin, you need something that's geared towards sensitive skin and if you tend to have oily skin then you need something that's going to really get rid of that excess sebum which causes the oil in the skin. Your skin is the largest organ on your body so it's really really important you take very very good care of it. I like to think of my skin as kind of like a roof to the house, um, protects you from the rain, the wind, kind of environmental factors that can damage it. As soon as you start letting holes appear that's when problems can happen. Um, this is where moisturiser comes in. Um, there's a lot more to it than just slapping it on. Um, the important thing is to find the right product for you. And again, I can't stress how important it is to really read the label, get to know your own skin before choosing the right product for you. The mistake that a lot of people do when it comes to their cleansing routine is thinking just slap it on and just wipe it off. Um, unfortunately, there is a technique to taking your makeup off and then what I always say to people is take as much time as you were taking it off as you would putting it on. That way, the next time you put your makeup on, you're going to get a really nice, smooth, clean surface and avoid the chance of getting any blemishes or anything that's going to ruin your look. The first thing to do before cleansing, the most important thing of all perhaps, is to wash your hands and make sure they're really clean because the best cleanser in the world, if your hands are dirty, you could be cleansing your face and you could just be spreading germs all around the skin. That's not what you need to do. There are three main st stages when it comes to cleansing. The first stage is actually beginning to take the makeup off. Now, it, you don't use a slapdash approach with this. You need to be quite gentle and using the right product for the right areas of the face. For example, Charlotte's wearing a lot of eye makeup, so I probably wouldn't use a normal cleanser for that. Instead, I'd use a very specialised cleanser that's designed to take eye and lip makeup off. The worst thing that you can do, especially around the delicate eye area, is drag it down. So it's literally just using really gentle dabbing mo motions. And take your time. As I said before, you really need to take as much time taking it off as you did when you put it on. I'm using a new product called L'Oreal de MAC, which I really like because each product is very much tailored to your skin's needs and it's a very bespoke approach to cleansing, which is quite new. Um, as you can see, I've already taken quite a lot of makeup off and I've only used the tiniest, tiniest bit of product. Um, so I know it looks like it's taking a lot of time, but I'm just doing it very gently because I don't want to drag the delicate skin of the eye down. So this product is really great because it will also remove waterproof mascara. Okay, I'm just finishing taking off her eye makeup. As you can see, it's done a really nice job. So I'm just really dabbing it very gently and it's got rid of lots of mascara there. When you're removing mascara, be very careful to remove all those little black blobs that can fall onto your skin um, because those can fall into your eyes later on and could irritate. I'm also going to use the same product um, for the lips because a lot of people tend to treat their lips quite roughly thinking that they can just like simply wipe off the lipstick but actually again you don't you want to avoid later on the little feathering lines that you can get which comes from horrible habits like smoking but also from really dragging down your cleanser so using the same technique I'm just going to really pat it gently here which is just going to remove any traces of gloss or lip liner the next stage is to actually remove the rest of the makeup, any surface grime, um, anything that's actually on the rest of the skin. Um, I'm going to use this product, which is called Cashmere Milk Expert Makeup Remover. There's a technique to applying cleanser. A lot of people tend to just apply it straight to the cotton wool. Um, that's really not the best way to do it. Instead, put a little bit on your pads of your fingertips and gently work it into the skin like this. 
The reason that I'm doing this and not just wiping it off in one fell swoop is because these kind of products actually do work to dissolve the makeup and you need to give it a little bit of time to work before wiping it off. When you're rubbing in your cleanser, also make sure that you get into little grooves like here behind the nose and above the lip, which are areas that you can miss. Now that I've applied the cleanser to this side of the face, as you can see, and it's had a little bit of time to work in, and it's melting the makeup and all the surface grime is going to come to the top. So again, using the same techniques I did to the eyes, not dragging down, but gently kind of pu you know, pushing the cotton wool pad into the skin and just removing it very gently like this. So there's no rubbing. You don't need to rub with these, um, these cleansers because they do all the hard work for you. So it's really just carefully just removing it. So as you can see, I've done nothing. All I've done is touch the pad with her face and it's coming off really nicely. I know this might feel like it's um, a bit like watching paint dry, but it's actually really, really important. And I guarantee you, if you start hurrying it or not taking your time when you're removing it, you will pay the price later on. I think we've removed all traces of eye makeup and foundation and any surface grime Charlotte may have accumulated. Um, you may think that the process is finished now, unfortunately it's not. There's one final thing that you need to do, which is simply just to splash some tepid water on your skin. Um, the reason that you do this is because these cleansers, especially hard-working cleansers like this, if you leave any traces on your skin, they won't stop working. So that might cause irritation or dryness later on. But a little splash of water, not too hot, not too cold, will remove all traces and then you're good to go with your moisturiser. If you're starting to worry about wrinkles, maybe they haven't happened yet, but it's a good adage to remember, stitch in time saves nine. So it's good to you know, take care now and you will reap the benefits later. Now, you'd have to have lived on Mars not to heard about Protect and Perfect, and it really does deserve this good press that it's had. Um, people ask me a lot, are beauty serums worth the money? And they are, they are worth the money, because what they do is they pave the way for your moisturiser. It's kind of like a fast track to your skin, if you like, letting the moisturiser sink in quickly, getting to where it really needs to go. So I'm just going to apply a little of this serum really gently. You, just, you don't need to rub it in, you just literally put it on, and it goes on very smoothly, and it's kind of very silken texture, and it's kind of very ple a pleasure to wear. So this is almost like the base for the moisturiser. So it's just, I'm just really concentrating on the areas on the cheeks and the forehead, um, around the chin. Um, you can use it around here as well, anywhere where you might get fine lines. As I've said before, with skin, one size doesn't fit all. Um, in the same way as you wouldn't go to a shop and just pick up any pair of jeans and think these are going to fit me, that's the same attitude you need to take with your skincare. So I've had a look at Charlotte's skin, and she's very lucky, she's got lovely skin, um, but she is slightly worried about wrinkles, about getting them, and prevention is better than cure, as we've discussed. So I've chosen number seven, Uplifting Day Cream. And again, with, as with any number seven products, they're really great because you just have to read on the jar, and that's basically what it does. So Uplifting Day Cream, it's, it's a very light cream, and it sinks in very easily to the skin, and it kind of but it helps the repair process. So... You know, so while Charlotte goes out and about and there's environmental factors like pollution, UV rays, this is going to help protect her skin. And I'm just placing it over the protect and perfect. And again, you don't need much. A lot of people tend to just slather on the moisturiser thinking that more, and more is more. But actually, you just need a little bit and apply it again very lightly and just dab it in to the skin like this. There are a lot of myths about beauty and skincare, and one is that you don't need a day and night cream. Um, you, to get the best out of your skin and your skincare regime, it's a really good idea to invest in a night cream. They work harder than your day creams. They're slightly heavier, um, and they're really they're created to sort of get right into that skin when you're sleeping, um, so that when you wake up in the morning, you've got gorgeous, glowing skin. Um, it's always best to use the same the products in the same family. So I'm using Uplifting Night Cream which is like the Uplifting Day Cream, but richer. Um, it's very powerful, so yet again, you really don't need to use a lot. A little goes a very, very long way with this. It's slightly heavier than a day cream, which is why it is a night cream, because makeup on top of this wouldn't work. It would probably just slide off. But it's a bit like a face mask. It's like a long drink for your skin, if you like, so that it wakes up completely rejuvenated, even if you've had a really hard night before. 
As you can see, Jessica's got really great skin, so she really doesn't need anti-aging products. A lot of people make the mistake of panic buying moisturizers and thinking, okay, I'm going to slap it all on, um, but you actually don't need to. So really, again, buy the product that's right for you. Jessica's got no fine lines, no signs of aging. She's obviously very clean living and drinks lots of water. So we're just going to use a really nice light product. Um, one that I've recently discovered is Nivea Oxygen, which contains 15% oxygen. Um, as we know, that's imperative for us because it's the air that we, in the air that we breathe. Um, this product is really light and lovely. It will protect Jessica's skin because it's got lots of antioxidants, um, UV filters, which stops all those horrible environmental factors. The great thing about this product is that you just need one little squeeze and you just get the, exactly the right amount. Um, so I'm just going to apply it here, the areas where she is a little dry, on the cheeks here, and on her forehead. I am going to apply a little on the, this area, but in a much thinner layer, because this is, a, this is where most of your sebum production happens on your skin, so it's naturally oilier. Um, the nice thing about this product is it's really nice, you can use it all the way down the neck, on the decollete. Um, it will, because this is one area that can age very quickly if you don't protect it, but we often neglect it. So it's very important to just spread your product here. I've still got plenty on my fingers, so as you can see, a little really does go a long way. Sebum is the oil that our skin produces naturally. It's the natural moisturiser, if you like. Um, sometimes it produces too little, which is when our skin gets dry. Um, especially which shows around these areas. Sometimes it can produce a little too much, which is what, what people with oily skin suffer from, but that's especially, it can become quite obvious on the forehead or the nose or the T-zone. So these are the areas where, even if you've got very lovely normal skin like Jessica, you just go a little bit lighter. You may have already heard about hyaluronic acid. It's been used by dermatologists and skin experts for years to replump and rejuvenate skin. Now it's available in a cream, which is great, because it will really penetrate those layers, and if you're really worried about wrinkles, it's a good place to start on your anti-aging program. Um, if you are worried about wrinkles and you want to start an anti-aging regime, it's a really good product to start with, because it really will help protect your skin. The great thing about dermogenesis, it's very easily absorbed, so it is suitable for younger skins, for people who are just maybe starting to worry a little bit about wrinkles and fine lines. So by using this product, just a little here and here, you're actually helping create a really nice environment for your skin to help regenerate itself. So you can actually maintain this lovely, smooth, even look um, for as long as possible.